Hello everyone and welcome to the third installment of the Dual Point Developer Update videos. Uh, I'm Zolar Kef and I will be taking through some of the stuff that I've been working on for the past two months. Uh, we've been hard at work trying to get some really great updates out for you guys and uh, they will be on their way as soon as we can uh, finish them up here. Uh, you've seen some of the work that Gus has been putting into in new buildings and uh, he gave you a snapshot of the new hotbar. I thought I'd start out and take a look at uh, how far the hotbar has come. Uh, we've sort of taken, um, we've gone back to what is basically a, you can think of it as more of a clone of the current Roblox hotbar. Um, it's still draggable on location, you can switch stuff out as you please without having any sort of hassle. The only difference from what you saw before is that icons no longer fly in from the right and you have a set number of slots, so there isn't going to be any shifting around of the slots, and we thought that would just become a nuisance after a while. Um, the hotbar, uh, beneath the hotbar, you're going to see one of our new features as well. Uh, we thought that the old health, hunger, and thirst bars were looking a little dated, um, since they were based on an old Roblox standard, so... Uh, we went ahead and updated those, and uh, when we did that, we went ahead and we added a third color indicator for uh, each of your stats. So it's now green when you're uh, in good standing with that statistic, yellow when you are, you know, about halfway. And then if you're low, the statistic will be red, so let's go ahead and drink our Sprite. Um, another GUI update you're going to notice. Uh, let me go ahead and equip this compass. Uh, the compass is entirely different. Uh, the compass now uh, shows tick marks for not just the four main cardinal directions, but also interim directions, and it's also just a hell of a lot nicer. It's a linear compass, so there's not going to be any more of that circular rotation. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it is a million times better, and that also eliminates the last free model from Apocalypse Rising after nearly three years quite incredible, to be honest. Um, when I shot that zombie there, you may have seen one of the new features that has been implemented, uh, which is uh, uh, which is the equipping animation. Uh, currently, the animation is very simple, but here, let's go ahead and take a look. Really quick, uh, it's designed to not be any sort of nuisance um, to the player. But what the equipping animation does is it uh, basically sets up uh, sets us up for a lot of the more animation updates we plan to do with the phases, and also it allows uh, variation between different weapons on how quickly they can equip. So you'll see that my uh, AN94 actually equips uh, significantly slower than my tiny little sidearm here. Uh, so that will make a difference in some combat situations, although you know not enough to be annoying to the player. Uh, one of the other great updates we've been working on, let me find a zombie here, has been with melee weapons. A lot of people have been asking for a melee update for some time, and we haven't really seen a need to change them. Uh, we don't necessarily plan on ever adding in crazy blocking and a bunch of different moves. However, uh, we did add in one simple new move for everyone. Let me go ahead and dispatch the zombie. Uh, the new move is the power attack, and the power attack uses stamina, and it deals significantly more damage than the regular attack. So let's take a look. That's your normal swing, as compared to the power attack. And as you can see, my stamina drops power attack takes a little bit longer, but it deals a lot more damage. Uh, there are a number of strategic advantages for this. You can imagine yourself uh, sneaking up on someone and instead of having to hit them with a hatchet a bunch of times to take them down, one swift uh, swing to the head could be enough to take them out if they're lower on health. Uh, we're really interested to see how you guys use this. It also just adds another option and that's we're all for that. The next update I'm going to show you is one of my favorites. So, throughout Apoch's history, loot has always spawned in unanchored, which means it will float above the ground near its spawner, it will drop down to the floor, and anchor once it stops moving. Uh, but you can imagine that that has uh, significant disadvantages in physics calculations, 
um, uh, that can cause lag. Um, we finally removed this, and uh, instead of that system, loot now spawns in completely anchored. There's a simple way of uh, that I developed to detect uh, an object's collision box based on its meshes. Um, and with that, we are able to make loot spawn in not only anchored on the ground, but also better than ever before. Loot will no longer float like it used to in many occasions. Um, so loot's always going to be firmly on the ground. Uh, no matter what its mesh is, it's going to spawn in just like that. And it doesn't matter if you have, uh, if you drop the loot or if it spawns in, it's always going to anchor. Uh, so no more unanchored loot, no more loot flying off. It's all going to be right there. It's not going to slide down hills, uh, which is fantastic <laughs> improvement. So one of the big complaints about APOC is that ADS is not a viable method of combat uh, because it is very difficult to control, and at a distance it's nigh impossible to do an automatic. Uh, so we've revisited it, and we've taken a look at what it looks like, we've seen if we can make it more controllable. And the result is pretty nice. Uh, we've got a little bit of tweaking to do, but first of all, the visual for ADS is just a hell of a lot nicer. You'll see the, the gun actually kicks back more than it does up now, uh, which is significantly more realistic. Um, alongside this, at distance, uh, automatic fire is significantly more controllable. Uh, this has the obvious advantages of being a basically adding in ADS to be a viable combat mechanic. Uh, that leads me to one final uh, little update, and it's an absolutely tiny, minuscule one you probably have never even noticed before. Um, in current APOC, if you run out of ammo for a gun, this does not happen. The ammo GUI just completely disappears from your screen. And we thought, why the hell does it do that? So, there you go. It now tells you when you're out of ammo. So alongside all of this, uh, I've been going through, and as Gus has told you guys, I've been rewriting more or less all of the code in APOC, and it's been a long task, but it's finally nearing completion. We're seeing significant efficiency improvements, and it's going to allow us to do some pretty cool things in the future. So we hope you keep your eye out for that. Uh, we'll surely have another development update video for you coming out soon, and hopefully we'll be getting these updates to you in, well, whenever the hell we do that. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching, and uh, we hope you're as excited for the future of APOC as we are. See you later.